Okay, it's time to share some Sega CD memories. My brother was so hyped when this mammoth was first announced, he'd go on and on about the CD quality sound and the storage capacity. 750 megabytes, he'd say. I had just turned nine, so that didn't mean much to me. Finally, he said, Andy, four cartridges can fit on a CD without a problem. I was like, wow, no way. The Sega CD was so expensive, our mom made it a birthday slash Christmas present. That makes sense since it was $300 at launch. I know that ain't shit now, but remember, the Genesis was $150 by that point, and here you have a peripheral that demands twice that. Sega tried to soften the blow by tossing in several pieces of software, claiming it was a $300 software value. That sounds pretty sweet, right? So what did we get? This was the first game we tried. The audio was fantastic and the opening anime was awe-inspiring. What can I say, we were easily impressed. Besides, Soul Feast was our first experience with CD gaming. It looks great and plays just fine, though aside from the soundtrack and intro, it doesn't look like anything the Genesis couldn't handle. Oh, well shit. Like most side-scrolling shooters, it's harder than three-month-old shit wrapped in concrete and generally leaves me in a whirlwind of curses. Regardless, I keep trying. I have no idea why. It must be a glutton for punishment. I'll dig a little deeper once my skills improve. Yeah, right. Next, we have the Sega Classics Arcade Collection. Four games in one? Hey, my brother wasn't kidding! That's what I thought then, at least. Then I saw this and I was like, what? There's a later version that includes Super Monaco GP, which is now one game shy from matching the six pack. That's just sad. Obviously, this disc's running a little light. Really, only four games? Adding insult to injury is the fact that my brother and I already had these games on Genesis. Fuck, I'm sure most Jenny owners had them by this point. Fear not, it's not completely worthless for a few of these titles are sporting some extras. The voices in Golden Axe aren't digitized grunts and screams that cut the music off whenever they're heard. No way, uh-uh. Instead, we have clean Red Book quality voice samples with music ripped straight from the arcade. Very nice, though it's only one player? What? Streets of Rage is classic Genesis, except for the voice samples. It's cool and all, though the screams can grate on my nerves after a while. Packed with the 4-in-1 is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. If you are a fan of BBC One Sherlock or Elementary on CBS, you may be disappointed for it's more period appropriate to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's novels. This is a point-and-click adventure where you're given three mysteries to solve, each beginning with a lengthy video setting the scene, then it kicks you to a menu where you can hunt for clues in the London Times or visit the scene of the crime or even Scotland Yard. If you need further assistance, there's the Baker Street Irregulars. I actually like point-and-click games, but I do have a complaint. Where is the music? Really, there's very little to be heard. Not that it's all that great to begin with. Still, a lonely violin would have been appreciated for when I'm skimming over the personal ads. Now here's an oddity. Rock paintings. Yeah, this is a CD plus G disc. I'm sure some of my younger viewers are scratching their tits right about now, but these are CD plus graphics discs, and they were first introduced in the mid-80s. The discs contain simple graphics, typically displaying song lyrics and whatnot, popular amongst karaoke enthusiasts. Clearly, there's not much to say. You got some good artists here, like Chris Isaac and Fleetwood Mac. The Fleetwood Mac choices suck. Why not some tracks off of rumors like The Chain or Gold Dust Woman? Such a shame. The Information Society's tracks are great. Yeah, their music's awesome, but the graphics themselves are fucking brilliant. They throw out oddball trivia like their clubhouse being called Babyland. Fuck, the band is introduced by their pet cat Beanie. It even gives us James Cassidy's favorite recipe for chili and his top 10 favorite Kiss albums. So weird. These are the very same graphics on their debut CD, so it's nothing new, but it's nice to have. 
Jimi Hendrix is represented by fire and manic depression. Solid choices, a tad obvious, sure, though it doesn't matter, good music is good music. The graphics are trippy, no lyrics, no trivia, but a tit? Yeah, that's a tit. That's what we got here in the States way back in 92. It wasn't the earth-shattering demonstration one would expect from a cutting-edge CD add-on. Saying that, my brother and I were glued to that Sega CD for hours, and we had a great time. Hey! You still don't have a Sega CD? Huh? What are you waiting for, Nintendo to make one? <laughs> you have seen the games, right? Uh, Wrong uh, answer, man. Show them! <laughs> Want to see more? <laughs>